Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight we have Jim Stafford and this is going to be Jim playing to begin with Malagena and then he stops playing that and then gets into classical gas with a tiny bit of Flight of the Bumblebee thrown in there as well. There's a little bit of talking and joking around from Jim as well which we're just going to play the video through and I'll stop it in little sections just to point out what's going on with Jim's guitar playing but let's get him up on screen and see how he gets on. I'm just going to jump in here because Jim, having just played through that intro and now getting into that faster strumming part as well, he's now kind of joking around that he can't play it. Whereas that whole first section, all of his hammer-ons and pull-offs, his alternate picking, and all he's using a pick here, so no finger style, it's all you know flat picked, and it was all spot on. And that's what I love about this video is that the technique is really impressive, and Jim is a top player, but then he's joking around as if he can't play it and I assure you he will be able to play the whole thing if he wanted to but it's just the way that he's written this particular sketch but the amount of technique and practice that's obviously gone into this like I said he actually played a multitude of instruments as well so he's not just playing guitar he played banjo lots of other things you can look at it very much like Roy Clark in terms of having that entertainment value that you get with playing but real top playing top end playing here from Jim just in that intro so now he's going to be getting into a little bit of classical gas but that whole first part was just massively impressive even though he's really playing down his own ability with this sketch The fella called the cops. He said, I'm going to report a dead man on my front porch. The cop said, how do you know he's dead? The fella said, well, I don't know that he is dead, really. I just assumed he was dead. Just going to jump in here. We're going to hear this joke. I've already heard it, but I'm going to try not to smile because it's just funny when we get to the punchline. But the way that he's playing at the moment, just picking up and down the strings and applying a palm mute. So there's still a bit of technique going on here, guitar wise. And generally, you'll bring in that palm mute to change the dynamic within a song to get that softer and almost punchier sound to your picking and in this case, he's just moving up and down the strings. And the reason that he's put in that palm muting is because he's talking over the top. So he wants the guitar to be quieter, but he still wants that backing. And it's really great because he's actually having his own backing going on to the story that he's telling, to the joke that he's telling. The first thing you do when you pick up a guitar isn't learning how to palm mute. You know, it's one of those things that comes further down the line once you want to get expression into your playing. But Jim goes straight into this palm muting to now make it clearer for this little story that he's telling over the top. He'd been laying out there now for about a month. <laughs> the cop said, well, where do you live? We'll send over the wagon. The fellow said, I live on Defuniac Street. The cop said, how do you spell it? The fellow said, D-E-F-E-U-N-I-A-C. D-U-F-E-N-Y-A-C. 
D Funi, D E Funi, let's see Funi, see D. Well, we got that part D. Uh, see D Funi, and then act on the end there. It'd be a K or a C or something. Maybe a C and C K act. I don't know. So there's D and then Funi and then act. Funi though, there's Funi. There's the one Funi. I'm gonna have to call you back. <laughs> the cop said, what do you got to call us back for? The fellow said, it's gonna take a while to drag this sucker over to Oak Street. Here we go. I'm just going to jump in here just to have a quick word about Jim's technique here. Obviously, you know, it's great entertainment the fact that Jim could really deliver those jokes and be so entertaining whilst playing. But then, as soon as we're now getting into classical gas, you can see that right hand, the way that he's still picking with that thumb and first finger holding the pick, but that third finger isn't doing the top section, it's the second finger that's coming in. So you can have a little look at that hybrid technique that he's got going on there. Again, it's not basic stuff, this is really great playing. And the way that he's really picking it out is so melodic, the band is absolutely spot on as well throughout the whole thing. But there's a hell of a lot of technique going on here that you might not get and people might not really understand how good this is from Jim because of the fact that he's telling a joke and it's all a bit lighthearted. But now we're actually getting into some seriously cool playing and it's going to get even better in a second. I'm just gonna jump in here because we had a little section there. Great alternate picking and synchronization between right hand and left hand because that was Flight of the Bumblebee, just a fast piece that a lot of guitarists will know and you probably know it even if you don't play guitar. But it's generally what they use for world record attempts at playing the fastest, you know, trying to get as many notes in as possible. That's the piece that they choose in order to test for that. So Jim is really playing impressively fast there with alternate picking. This takes hours and hours and months and years of practice to get that speed up with alternate picking. Another interesting thing technique wise is the way that Jim then pushes it to that double time strumming. The mistake a lot of people make when they try and speed up their strumming is they keep the same strumming span that they've had with their normal rhythm. But if that arc is too wide, you're never gonna get it any faster. You have to make that arc smaller in order to speed up that strumming. Here's a great example. If you wanna rewind it, you can see Jim is really constant concentrating on the two, three, and four, kind of the middle of the guitar, just those middle strings, so that he's not covering a wide distance of going up and down six all the time. So Jim absolutely has that down and nails that faster strumming part. Let's just listen to the last part of this performance.
And there we go, that's it. I mean, where did this kind of entertainment go? I mean, it certainly hasn't been around in my lifetime when you tune in to see someone that's so top level in terms of ability on an instrument and they're telling jokes. They're kind of doing effectively stand up. I know that he's sitting down, but we call it stand up in this country in terms of delivering comedy whilst he's doing it. But by the end, you really do get an appreciation of Jim's ability level and everyone's pretty much clued in now that this guy can absolutely melt faces. He can absolutely play at the top level. Another interesting thing technique wise there, we had those reverse sweeps from Jim as well. Just sweeping, raking up from that high E string coming all the way towards him, just three or four strings. Really great technique. Again, really advanced stuff. If you do play guitar, you'll know that sweeping is one of those things that takes a lot of time to get down. Even if you're just sweeping chord shapes, to get it nice and concise will take a lot of practice and also to get the phrasing to keep that arpeggio, the notes of the chord, that arpeggio nice and even when you're raking across those strings it takes a lot of practice. So again, another technique that will fly under the radar unless you actually play guitar and you know how difficult that is. Jim's just a great example of one of those guys that was so likable and could entertain a crowd just with his personality, but then also was a top level musician as well. Very much like Roy Clark that I mentioned earlier. And Jim played obviously guitar, but also banjo and fiddle and organ and harmonica. He was a multi-instrumentalist. So he had such great ability at so many instruments. And these kind of guys, I don't think are around anymore, especially not on TV. You can't just tune into a TV show and the guy presenting it is the guy who's actually got all the talent as well. The presenters could introduce an act and they could join in and be just as good, if not better, than the actual act that they're bringing on stage. So it has such a wide skill set. I've said this before. So this video is a really cool one, light-hearted, but it's packing a punch when you look into those details of technique and ability that Jim has got. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at. And keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Ra